Every style is great if you find the right teacher for your personality. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Welcome. You're listening to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 532, with today's guest, Sensei Ron Kluger. Who am I? I'm Jeremy Lesniak. I'm Whistlekick's founder. I'm a host for the show, and I love the traditional martial arts, which is why everything we do at Whistlekick is in support of the traditional arts. If you want to see everything that we've got going on, go to whistlekick.com. It's our online home. It's also the easiest way to find our products. And if you use the code PODCAST15, you can save 15% off those products. Our podcast has a website all unto itself, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. We bring you two new episodes every week. And the goal of this show is to connect, educate, and entertain traditional martial artists throughout the world. If you want to support the show and just the overall work that we're doing here, there are a bunch of ways you can help. You could make a purchase. You could share this or another episode. You could follow us on social media. You could tell a friend about what we're working on, pick up one of our books on Amazon, leave a review, or support our Patreon. Patreon.com slash Whistlekick. Patreon's a place where we post exclusive content, and if you contribute as little as $2 a month, you're going to get access to some of it. The more you're willing to contribute, the more content you're going to get access to. Today's guest comes to us from another country. Well, many of you are listening from other countries, and I hope that you can appreciate our efforts to bring on people from different backgrounds, different countries, different, obviously, martial arts. And we have that for you today. Sensei Kluger comes to us from Israel. He's got a background in judo and karate. And he was pretty firm in making sure that I didn't greet him as sensei or or concho or any of these other titles he deserves. He wanted me to introduce him as Ronnie. So that's what I did. This is a fun episode, very insightful, lots of wonderful, wonderful commentary on not just being a martial artist, but teaching martial arts. So I hope you enjoy it. I got a lot from this one. I'm sure you will too. Check it out. Hey there, Ronnie. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for coming on the show. Love to hear you and love to chat to you. Yeah. Yeah. I've been, I'm looking forward to this and the the listeners are going to notice that I I greeted you very informally because that's what you asked me to do. And I try to respect, (laughs) I try to respect what the guests ask for. So this is the way. Yes, this is, this is the way. Is that a a reference to the show, the Mandalorian? Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Uh, That is a, that's a fun show. In fact, I've, um, I don't know if you're at all a, a fan of Star Wars of, of that that whole universe, but a friend of mine, Sensei Jared Wilson, has a has a podcast of his own, and he did a multi part series talking about the martial arts of Star Wars, which I thought was really oh. fun, mm-hmm. yeah. really fascinating. Now, of course, you're here to, to talk about martial arts, talk about your your experiences, your stories, where you are, where you've been, and I like to rewind the tape. It's maybe it's the kind of a cheap thing for me to do yeah. as an interviewer but but let's do it let's rewind to the beginning when did you start training yeah uh, i'm now 68 years old i started when i was 12 uh, 64 and uh, the only martial art was available is judo uh, and uh, i started judo in a very nice uh, dojo very nice sensei and i went for it very seriously I loved every moment, and for some reason, and I cannot point out the the reason, I dreamed about martial arts from very early age when I was still blind to the martial arts, Mm. and I cannot explain it. And uh, the dojo club uh, opened their doors only from age of 12. And I was waiting and counting the days and the hours until I was be able to start <laughs> and this was my first step on tatami on the mat wow and what was that first day like that first day of judo when you'd been looking forward to it so much uh, it's a kind of a dream a very childish dream uh, with uh, wearing kimono and uh, bow and Japanese uh, terminology and doing the exercises and everything was like uh, 
Alice in the Wonderland, and it's so special and so different. And uh, I was excited and waiting for the next class, and uh, it's still on. Nothing changed. Mm. And that that excitement, it just it stuck with you. And yep. It sounds like it's still there. It's still there. No question about. It. Uh, I went through a lot of uh, uh, stairs to step and move and go, but it's still there. I'm still excited about martial arts, and uh, I moved, of course, uh, with the experience and the uh, age from uh, being a sportsman uh, to become a martial artist, from being an athlete to become a budoka, uh, from being a budoka to being a teacher, and from being a sensei in a dojo, teacher in a dojo in a, for classes uh, to university lecture in the sport university of Israel, I am from Israel, and uh, I was lucky enough to start in 1986 the martial arts program of uh, our sport university, the famous Wingate Institute, and uh, I established the martial arts department for all martial arts, uh, instructors, coaches, senior coaches, and masters coaches uh, courses. I wrote all the training programs. I run the course, and uh, so I see martial art not from one dimension, but uh, from scratch up, and uh, it's, it's an art. And, uh, you know, in my courses and my training classes, I always ask the beginners, uh, what is, why you call martial art a martial art? What artistic about uh, meeting each other two, three, four times a week bashing each other and you call yourself an artist. Where's the art? And uh, uh, the, the question is uh, weird and uh, very rarely someone is answering. And they answer, you know, the beauty of the kata and the movements have to be accurate. So, uh, this is uh, copying. It's not an art. Where's the art? And uh, slowly, slowly, I'm guiding them to, of course, my expression and my way of looking things. And now, what you're doing with the ABC, you learn. Do you become a Shakespeare? Or you can write a little note to your friend that you went out to have a drink. Mm -hmm. Still the same ABC. So what we're doing with what we learned, this is the art. It's your own handwriting, it's your own way of using, it's your own ability and understanding your own uh, disability. But get out the best of what you learned and uh, where you take it. And it's endless opportunities what to do with martial arts. Wow. The it's opportunity to, to design those curriculums to help yeah. martial artists... Um grow as coaches, as instructors, as masters. Yeah. How did that opportunity arise? Uh, it's become uh, one of our crazy governments uh, decided that uh, they want to regulate or control uh, who can teach any kind of physical activity, and they decide that it has to be a regulation that you have to have a minimal knowledge, a kit of knowledge, uh, to be to allow you to stand in front of students, mm. children, adults, and you must have a minimum of knowledge. And the, the government want to control that. Do you have those this kit of knowledge? And it was, of course, uh, I understand, of course, in, uh, in the States, it's against the law, almost. Or not almost. It's against the law that someone is controlling what you can do or what you cannot do. But uh, it came. It was uh, a lot of antagonism against the law, but it's a law. So in 86, I was quite young, but the... Uh, 
Sport University chose me out of many others to lead this department, to build up the, co- the coaching system, the instructor system. And the, the system is uh, built on, first of all, um, uh, scientific knowledge, uh, anatomy, physiology, uh, psychology, sports psychology, plus mm. martial arts. And we're not teaching in those courses. I'm not dealing to correct your technique uh, upon my view, your style, your uh, your uh, technique is your technique. It's your school or your teacher or whatever you want to go. That's not my business. I give you tools how to transfer your knowledge the best possible way to your people. Mm. It's something and, that I, I think more instructors would probably benefit from. Uh, you know, speaking for here in the United States, we have quite a few because yeah. we don't have these laws that uh, are lacking. And in my opinion, it's, uh, the law is not the main point. The main point is that uh, many, many, many instructors, martial artists, masters don't uh, think of the importance of uh, methodology way of teaching, uh, how to find the right way to transit knowledge, transfer knowledge. Mm-hmm. And it's not less important than to understand the technique you're teaching and what you can do, how to open students' mind, what you can do with the technique. And can the instructor adapt those techniques to the student? We're teaching a class but I'm teaching individuals. And uh, in my opinion, to be a fine martial artist is one thing, and to be a fine teacher, you need both. You need to be a fine technician and a fine teacher. And you need to invest in both sides, both important factors. Mm. To know your subject, and to advance your knowledge, of course, and to know your abilities to teach and to advance your abilities to teach. Critical. You, absolutely. Now, you mentioned that you were fairly young when you were asked to head this department. Yeah. Where did you gain the knowledge to put these curriculum together to teach others? Uh, first of all, uh, I was extremely lucky to grow up in the hands of excellent teachers that be not only good uh, judoka and later in 1970 i started karate by luck not uh, not that i meant but it was purely a luck and uh, since i'm doing karate and uh, those teachers been also excellent uh, technicians and excellent teachers. Besides this, I gain uh, general education, uh, university, normal, and uh, I combine the two. And uh, strangely and sadly, not in the martial arts community, not many professional, I'm talking now not the amateurs, but the professional uh, club leaders, dojo leaders, teachers, the professionals were not investing almost at all in advancing their ability to teach. Mm. And um, I'm doing it intensively everywhere in the world, not only in Israel. And it's something even in Japan that it's a startup that uh, not many... Uh, martial arts is teaching how to teach. And I think it's critical to to be well established in your dojo, in your club, in your system. And this is the future of martial arts. Yeah. We've talked about this on the show a, a number of times, the idea that martial arts mm-hmm. is really the biggest thing in the world where the instructors aren't taught broadly how to teach that we are taught yeah. skills that our yeah. advancement is based around our own personal skill or it's has yeah. 
rarely anything to do with passing it on. Why do you think that is? How did we get here? I think it's, uh, you know, I don't, you have a martial arts background. Yes. So you understand it. Uh, martial arts world is, uh, you know, it's everywhere. Everything, it starts from a very practical uh, fighting system, a non-traditional eclectic system, local uh, fighting uh, ways, and of course, traditional martial arts. And uh, it's very, very complex to realize that the traditional martial arts doesn't mean simply to copy a picture. My teacher said, do this, I'm doing that. Uh, I love the example of ABC because it's simple and very handy to understand. Mm. We all can read and write, but uh, not everyone become a world famous uh, poetry writer, someone that can use the language in a very, very sophisticated high class. And the martial art is no different. We all, from the very beginner to the very senior masters, we only have two hands, two legs, something between the ears. This is the tools we have. No one has extra tools. Mm. What we can add is understanding, knowledge, death and wife of the knowledge and how to use it. And how to use it, this makes differences between people who are uh, learning in one school or another school. And there's a lot, a lot of arguments and sometimes it's ugly and sometimes it's very diplomatic, nice, friendly way. Which style is better? It's crazy. It's, uh, every style is great if you find the right teacher for your personality and you love what you do. So people who like uh, practical self-defense, uh, heavy contact fighting scenes is not the same person who loves Tai Chi. Right. And the same in karate world and same in any kind of fighting system. And uh, the, the world of traditional martial arts sometimes uh, become, uh, well, what is traditional? My teacher, uh, three centuries back, said, do this. I'm doing that. First of all, you don't know what he did. You didn't saw him. And it's going through people. And uh, what you get is what your teacher understand and explain to you. And here, the point of ability to teach is critical. Uh, you know, in, uh, I'm practicing my uh, uh, karate do style is Okinawa Goju Ryu. And I belong to a very historic dojo in Okinawa, the Jundokan Dojo. And uh, a lot of chats going on and uh, very little official um, documentary about how my teacher thought and what his teacher thought and what his teacher thought. So it's an uh, oral uh, tradition. What I understand, I can tell you. What I don't understand, I cannot tell you or teach you. And are human beings, and not all the great masters being intellectual uh, and high-class teachers. They've been excellent karate excellent martial artists, excellent fighters. And uh, I can tell you as a fact that what we do today has nothing to, I'm talking from the traditional side, has very little to do with exactly my teacher and the teacher and the teacher of the teachers did. It's an oral tradition and I, I was lucky enough to, you know, in my long years of doing what I'm doing, I have a certain sentence as, sentences that changed my life or my view, and it's always in front of me. 
and uh, Miyazato sensei, the uh, famous headmaster of the Jundo Kandojo in Okinawa, he told me in one of the opportunities I've been, I've been alone in the dojo, no one came there, and I asked him questions. But he said, I said don't tell me what you do at school, I don't care what you do at home. I'm checking your basics and I'm checking that the kata is accurate. So if you want to remain idiot, just do it again and again and again. If you want to go on, try to analyze the move and try to understand and try to put your own fingerprint on the realization of the technique. And this is that. This is the biggest motivation I have in my life that I'm writing on my own handwriting a language. And I think this is the greatness of martial arts. I would agree. Now, of course, here on this show, when we talk about your country, Israel, quite often yeah. it's because we're talking about Krav Maga. Krav Maga. Is, yeah. is Krav, does Krav Maga fall under the curriculum that you teach? It's uh, my, uh, one of the sidelines that I'm working with. Uh, naturally, I, I've been in, on service, and I was teaching uh, Krav Maga. And in the last uh, almost 20 years, I'm teaching uh, governmental unit instructors, uh, Krav Maga instructors. Mm. And uh, Krav Maga has become almost a fashion. And uh, it's a, a really a great startup for uh, professional uh, units, uh, you know, governmental or private uh, security people, adornments, very simple, very handy, easy to understand, most natural and simple way to defend and control the attacker. Now, if you go on YouTube and you write Krav Maga, 99% you see people hitting meat and backs, and uh, it's a great physical exercise and keeping you in shape, but it's not instead of understanding what's going on by um, someone is jumping on you with a knife or without a knife. And uh, Krav Maga is not a martial art. It's a uh, system that teaching, and first of all, almost every unit has a different package of knowledge in Krav Maga. It's giving you the right tool to fulfill your duty. And it's different than uh, any of the fighting systems and martial arts, because mm -hmm. it's no basics and uh, advanced technique. If you are a policeman that's working in the street in a certain area, analyzing which kind of danger you're facing and giving you tools to solve those problems. If you are a doorman in a club, analyzing what may, may happen in that club, giving you the right tool to face and solve the problem. If you're in a special unit, they're analyzing what is your duty and giving you the right tools to solve the problem. And this is great. And this taking in consideration that the professional security personnel are not professional athletes. Duty is not important. The, uh, the technique is very simple, very handy, easy to learn for an average person in a limited time because uh, all those professionals cannot train lifetime training. I have a course. During the course, you learn X, Y, Z, plus self-defense, Krav Maga, Israeli system, military self-defense, or professional self-defense. And uh, you got the tools to solve the problems that in your duty you might face. So it's great. And it's uh, doing the work. And it's popular. But what you see in uh, private clubs or you see in awarding uh, belts, this is not the uh, real stuff. 
I'm not saying that they are good or bad. It's not a, I'm not a technically criticizing. I'm saying that to understand Herb Maga, it's a different way of looking what we need. For fulfilling your job, you need to use your fist, your leg, or a baton, or knife, or a gun, and we give you those tools. This is Krav Maga. And it's not for studying for 25 years and moving up in the bell system. It's nothing, to, it's nothing wrong with it. But the original idea for professionals, you mentioned that I'm gonna I'm gonna make a, a hard turn here, bring up something yeah. that, that you mentioned earlier. I think you said it was 1970 you made the transition from judo to karate. Yeah, yeah. How did that happen? Uh, I was practicing in a very high class, famous judo club, and a new immigrant from South Africa arrived in Israel. And then my judo teacher brought him into our club to introduce karate. And he was a South African guy. And, uh, you know, he started, it's a new immigrant, uh, you know, we should help him to integrate and to, to settle down. And uh, as an assistant, I came to his class. And uh, it was almost like a recreation from my harsh judo training. Once a week, I do an hour of a different uh, uh, physical exercise, and it's fun, and I love it. This was the beginning. And uh, I went for my military training. And uh, in the unit I was served, Another karate teacher arrived from France, and he was running once a week uh, karate class in that uh, unit. And I went to train with him. Now, South African guy was a Goju Ryu guy. The guy in my military unit was a Shotokan guy. So I trained sometimes once a week here, once a week there. And it's become something that I enjoyed very much. But uh, it's a sideline. And uh, I had a very bad uh, knee injury from the... I've been in judo in the uh, national team. And in a training, I twisted my knee and it, it took that. And, uh, you know, the coach said, uh, this way you cannot continue, you have to race go for recreation, and we don't know, and I'm not sure, and, uh, but, but in the team, it's impossible like this, okay? And uh, the karate teacher said, no problem, you know, keep your knee uh, safe, but you can come, no problem in karate. So slowly, slowly, step by step, I moved to karate, uh, I train twice a week now, and uh, I tried to recreate my knee. And uh, the teacher of the South African instructor came from South Africa. And this was the first time that I met a karate teacher that had been in uh, Okinawa, in Japan, more experienced. And uh, I had a chat with him. And he told me first time in my life deeply about what is martial art, what is judo. It's not only sport, it's not only competition, it's a bit deeper than this. And he asked what I think about my future after the military service. And I said, oh, you know, I met uh, Roska, which, who visited Israel. Roska was uh, the first non-Japanese judo champion in 63 Olympics in uh, Japan, in judo. And he visited Israel and he said, listen, if you've got enough money, you're welcome to my club and uh, I make you a judo instructor in one year. You sleep, eat, live in my dojo and you go home as a teacher, world champion, the best you can get. And I told this to the Japanese, uh, to the uh, South African uh, karate teacher. And he said, 
I think with Uni, you can do better in a non sportish uh, Budo style karate school. And if you have enough for flying, I will host you for two years in South Africa as an inside Uchideshi, which is an inner student in Japanese, sleeping, eating, living in a dojo. Mm. Full-time karate, you're not doing anything else. You're not going anywhere. You're practicing, practicing, practicing. And you come home to Israel as a qualified dojo head. And I thought about it, and I love the chat about martial arts. That's something behind competition. And uh, after about six months, I went away to South Africa to be a Uchideshi. Uh, dojo living style that's never been before. I never thought of it. Living, eating, sleeping, life in a dojo. And I made it. And uh, it was a very, very unique experience. Mm. Great teacher in Cape Town. And uh, I came home started to teach. And uh, I started also normal education besides the karate, uh, physical education, qualified uh, instructor, coach, teacher. Uh, and I studied education in the university. And uh, it went great. And I loved every moment. Wow. So... Slowly, when I came home, I still was teaching uh, judo classes. And slowly, slowly, I turned into more and more karate until I opened a full-time dojo, which is uh, very unique until today, strange. From the 70s until today, it's a very, very non-existing uh, thing in Israel, at least, a full-time karate dojo, mm. seven days a week. Every day, four to ten o'clock at four o'clock afternoon, four o'clock p.m., ten o'clock p.m. Every day classes, and uh, it works. <laughs> and uh, I still enjoy teaching every day, and I'm teaching twice a week uh, instructors courses, academic courses, and I very much advise everyone always never stop learning not only exercising keeping up physically which is critical and important very important but it's much more to advance yourself of understanding what you're doing to go deeper deeper and deeper digging out things that you can do with your uh, art mm -hmm. understanding it better advancing it thinking in a way that maybe your teachers didn't thought. And it's not to break the rules, because the language of a style, if you get it, it's a language. It's a strategical and tactical philosophy. There, you know, just for an example, Okinawa Gojuri is very circular, Shotokan is very straight. Uh, and each and every style got a kind of language. Uh, you know, it's a bit off topic, but it's on topic. Uh, people are often talking, you know, I'm looking for this style or that style. An average person don't have a clue what is the style until you're not studying it deeply, researching, experiencing, learning. You don't know what it is. It's a word. Again, an anecdote, you know. In my dojo, we're not doing what's called full contact. And many people coming in, do you do full contact? Said, no, we're not doing full contact. Ah, you're not touching. You're only showing a sign. No, we're touching, but it's not full contact. And they say, oh, I don't know. Okay, please. Experience, have a look. Before you enter, have a look what we're doing. And, uh, you know, I ask him, what is your profession? What are you doing? Yes. And uh, I say, you know, 
you're ready to have a black eye and going tomorrow to work. I said, what do you mean by this? I get hit. I was looking for full contact. Your partner is also doing full contact. No, no, no. You know, I, I, I thought I'm hitting full contact. I never thought of getting hit full contact. So people don't know what <laughs> is the style. And then the second question, you know, full contact. If you do full contact, it means or you or me in hospital or dead. Now, if we're doing full contact and nothing happens, what else you can do? So full contact is a word. And even people who are doing full contact, it's not an ambulance outside the training hall and uh, every pair, one of them going to hospital or, or end his life. Mm. So what is full contact? Or you cannot be harder, or not, you're not doing it on purpose because you say, you know, I want to train with you tomorrow too. So it's a word. And the same with every single style. So to publish a style is not the point. Uh, and I think it's very important to realize that the reason someone is practicing is the teacher. And if the teacher has material to teach you, you will come back. And if you see a future in your study, and I'm not talking about birth, birth is a sign, but not the birth. You want to come back because it's interesting, it's touching, it's fulfilling you, it's giving you something that you feel comfortable with. If you can't provide the material, people will not come back. And there is another point that connecting the martial arts teaching abilities. I always say that if someone knocking on my door and asking if he can join a class, I say he is a potential lifetime client, student. But to make sure that he will be so, I need to give knowledge even after 40, 50 years of training with me, they will say, wow, this I never heard. Wow, this way of practice, uh, exercise, we never did. This way of doing things or this thought that you putting on the table, you know, I'm here 40 years, never missed a class. First time I heard it from you. Or you have a different explanation. Or you have a different way of guiding explaining, teaching, and this is the main in my eyes. And for this, we need intake, not only output. Teaching, a teacher must also continue to learn. Mm. Let's talk about that, because that's a, yeah. a really important subject, and it's one that, first off, not every teacher continues to learn, yeah. and those that do often have different views of what that means. We've talked to some guests who say there's always more to discover within your own art. We've yep. talked to guests who have said it is best for you to train in other arts. I would imagine, being that you are a teacher of teachers, this is a subject you discuss with your students at the school. Yep. What do you tell them? I, okay, I think each and every style of fighting up, martial art, martial way is uh, have a depth and have unbelievable ocean of knowledge. The question, how much of this is available for you? From my experience, every style, every style, every system has uh, groundwork, newaza, as uh, standing, kicking, punching, throwing, locking, choking. We all have this. The big question, do your guidance, mentors, teachers can provide all this? Or they learn just a part of it. And then they know what they learned. They don't know what they didn't learn. And uh, it's critical that we, all our life, 
looking for people who have more knowledge and experience than us. Now, going to other stars, no problem if you have a mother star. Because maybe you can say a few words in 15 languages, but you cannot speak 15 languages. And the big question is, can we speak at least one, one language very high class, very deep, very educated, at least one? Mm. And then we can speak other languages too. But uh, without having a depth, at least in one, you're picking up little pieces of many things. And I'm not criticizing, I'm not saying, oh, they don't know, they know, because also a street fighter is a street fighter. I'm talking now about knowledge. And uh, the other side of the story, of course, is the ranks and the diplomas and the belts, which is important if you can fulfill the diploma, the belt, rank with uh, with product what you can produce no diploma or belt can give a class no diploma or belt can uh, have a student for long you need a man you need a person you need someone that can uh, motivate teach guide and measure knowledge available for the students. And uh, it's no, again, it's, uh, all systems are great if your teacher is educated. All teachers are having million available directions if the teacher exposes those directions. And if not, it's limited. And then you say, mm, to punch well, I need a boxer. For groundwork, I need uh, someone uh, Gracie. For uh, this, I need a Kenpo man, and for this, I need a Karate man. No. First of all, you can better when you have a well-established mother's son, experience other things. But the outcome should be, I don't care, and also I don't know what you can do to me and I will face the obstacle and solve it. Because mm -hmm. any other way, you're in a box, and I know you, you know me, we learn the same, we act the same way, and we're happily in the same zone. And I am aiming and directing, I don't know what you can do, but I will solve this obstacle. And for this, you need experience, for this, you need uh, a teacher that can expose you for this, and for this you also need to be exposed to other ways than your own way. It's a, you know, it's like life. Uh, I always say, a good dojo is a laboratory for life, mm -hmm. and uh, if you experience on tatami on the mat, you're experiencing life, success, failure. Uh, it's difficult for me, it's easy for me, someone is uh, nothing, someone is beating me, someone is too much, face life. And when you fall down, get up, learn from it, and next time it will be more difficult to take you down. And doesn't matter if we're talking about a light randori uh, training fight, or we're talking about a very rough fight, or we're talking about going to get a job. Okay? Yeah. You need to know how to answer, how to solve, how to present, how to move to a direction when you get what you want. Martial arts is about life, up and down. Not everything we want we get, but get it. Found a way, work for it. And uh, it's great. It's an excellent education. I agree. 
We have a lot of martial arts instructors listening. Mm, and, really? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, quite quite a I few of our it. listeners are our instructors, and I, I'm guessing that some of them are listening and saying, you know, I would love the opportunity to learn formally how to be a better martial arts teacher, but they're not going to get that opportunity. What might you advise them? What would you tell them? Okay. To do what? Okay. Common problems do you see in the students that come into your program that you are helping them with that they might consider seeking out some advice for okay if i may and uh, you know i understand the limitation uh, i'm heading uh, what's called the international buddha academy which mm -hmm. is an international institute for uh, teaching instructors, teachers, masters of martial arts. Uh, we're running uh, Zoom classes for qualifying instructors worldwide. And uh, I humbly advise to study. It's giving you a lot of tools. It's not teaching you technique. It's not to fix up your punch or your throw. It's teaching how to transfer knowledge. And the other side of the thing, continue to practice with someone that you admire as a well-experienced, knowledgeable teacher. And, uh, you know, I, I, I told you in the beginning that I'm uh, well-aged. And uh, as the time passing, it's less and it's more and more complicated to find more experienced people and more knowledgeable people. In the beginning, everyone knows more than me. But as you get older, uh, it's more and more complicated, less and less people about. And uh, I never stop training with higher class teachers than myself. And it's an endless process. And uh, sometime in your own place, there is no but go two, three times a year for a seminar, keep contact with knowledgeable people that you can ask and talk. And uh, please don't gain education from a, a video clip, from a book, from a magazine only. It can widen your horizons, but this is not education. Mm -hmm. Try and, uh, and uh, you know, I always say, if you found your right path in the way of a warrior, right style, the right uh, school, the right environment, go deeper and deeper and deeper, you've got all the answers. You need a good teacher, you need a good school, you need a good... Uh, uh, instructors in the backing you. And even if you are a very long experienced teacher, there is always new light and new experiences and new way of looking things. It's not changing your punch, it's changing the way you present it, it's changing the way you can teach it, it's changing the variations you can do with it. You know, it's just a uh, you know, we, some years ago, we ran a four-day full-time training camp only on punch. We never did again an exercise that we did previously. Five hours training per day, only punching, and we did every exercise different way. Uh, and it works. But for this, we need to understand what we can do with our technique. And it opens uh, the mind and uh, also physically, of course, but it's opened the minds of the students, not only one way of doing things, not only one solution. And never forget that the body is changing, our health is changing. We need to solve problems and martial arts can give you the answer. Mm. And for this, we need a good place to train. And I'd, the, like, 
in my opinion, everyone has a good place. Just mm. make sure that you keep yourself above, keep your nose above the water line. Very important. I agree. I want to ask you a question. I don't know that I've ever asked this question. We, we've had guests on Please. for five years, and something tells me to ask you this question. Please. What is the job, the responsibility of a martial arts instructor? Every instructor taking on himself responsibilities that he ready for, is capable for, and he can take responsibility for. The base, of course, you come to practice karate, I'm teaching you karate. You come to practice jiu-jitsu, I will teach you jiu-jitsu. If you come for Krav Maga, I will teach you Krav Maga. First of all, I need to have knowledge to give uh, measurable knowledge because you spend time, sweat, and money to be in my class. But if you feel capable, and it's in many cases, that you can educate, you can guide, you can help, you can advise, go for it. It's your choice. You can do it, you cannot do it. Uh, I only can talk from my way of uh, looking, doing, experiencing things, that with the age, I try to cover more and more life in the dojo. And if you like to chat with me, doors are always open. If you like to share problems, my doors are always open. You cannot imagine how many people don't have a hearing ears next to them to talk. The answer is not that important, but just to talk. And if you, if you have an answer, and if you can take responsibility of your answer, it's great. But it's very, very individual. And my advice, of course, don't go into anything that you cannot take responsibility of. The great and responsible answer, sorry, I don't know what to say. Sorry, this is not for me. Sorry, this is not the place to discuss this kind of thing. Mm. But if you can help, give your hand. But the upon you and the upon your uh, responsibility, what you can take responsibility of. If people want to learn a... more about you, uh, I think you sent in some websites. What? Where would people go? Websites, social media, things like that? Uh, I've got a couple of uh, websites karatedoi.com This is my karate school, International Budo Academy. And of course on Facebook, uh, Karate Do International, uh, International Budo Academy, and me, Ronnie Kluger. Most welcome to contact, to chat, and us. Yeah, great. And, and we'll definitely put those links up at at the on the uh, on the website page, Thank Whistlekick so Martial Arts Radio dot com. Thank you. Of course. And one more thing, as as we go, let's say you were in a long elevator ride. You know, let's I, say a twentieth floor. Yeah. You get a couple minutes with with a martial artist. You're on the elevator alone. They step on the elevator with you, and you know that they need some advice. What advice would you give that person that would inspire them and, and motivate them to train and, and be something that they could think back on later? Of course, keep on exercising, keep on researching, and try to see your technique and your way of fighting that you want to do it a bit better, and it's an endless path. Never ever say, that's it, I've got it. That's it, now I'm happy. It's excellent for that moment. But a minute later, I want to do it better. And it's the same of 
technical things, of course, practicing, I'm checking on, I'm looking on, and I'm trying to do better. And I advise everyone. If I'm coming out of a class, I always think, what was my program, how much of it I achieved, and how can I do better my class. And to be very, very sensitive. It's also self-defense thing, sensitivity, to sense what's going on around, where it's safe to enter, where to go around, where to talk, where to shut your mouth. Sensitivity. Try to feel around, and as more you can do it, you say so. And it's, uh, of course, in teaching too. Be sensitive to your students. They are not uh, plastic. They are not uh, wood. They are human beings. Try to find the best way to teach, to get them, to make them understanding. It's not a tape recorder. We want to make them better. And as more we can measure the better man, we're doing a better job. So it's not in my tummy I feel that you, now you're better. No. I systematically, measurable, can show you've been here, now in a different spot. And never be stagnatic. Move, move, move. Like I said, lots of insights in this one. And for those of you out there who are instructors, I hope you'll take this episode to heart. Maybe even go back and listen to it again. And if you have assistant instructors, this would be a great one for them to check out. Sensei, Ronnie, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for your time. Really, really appreciate it. I learned a ton. Listeners, go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Find the show notes. We've got photos and links to stuff we talked about today. Every episode gets its very own page. And if you're down to support the work that we do, you've got some choices. You can use the code PODCAST15 to save 15% off at whistlekick.com. You can also share an episode, leave a review, tell a friend, or contribute to the Patreon. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash whistlekick. I hope that if you see somebody wearing something with whistlekick on it, you'll introduce yourself. And if you have guest suggestions, I want to hear them. Email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day. 